Hi, it appears as if you've stumbled on my quick tutorial for making uh, photo adjustments in Photoshop. This picture was taken with a digital SLR at a fairly high quality, um, but I have reduced its size by a considerable, considerable amount because if I don't, um, every once in a while you'll lose half a word um, to the video recorder and sound compressor. So, uh, step one for doing, um, you know, primary adjustments um, on a picture like this is to um, fix up color. Most people uh, just do their color adjustments in RGB, but I find I can be more accurate and even faster if I do my color adjustments in lab color mode. Uh, when you're in lab color mode, uh, it separates your picture into different different kinds of channels. Not RGB, instead you get a lightness channel and an A and B channel. The A and B channels each store color data. Um, so A will store, um, I think it's green and uh, magenta, and I think B stores um, yellow and blue, or yellow and cyan. Uh, so if you, with all of your, um, with all of your channels selected, if you go into curves, image, uh, adjustments, sorry, uh, right. curves, control M is the shortcut that I will be using from now on. Um, you get a drop down for which channel you want to work on. Uh, if you select your A channel and pull in the top and the bottom, you increase the amount of color, uh, the, the saturation of the color inside your image. So by pulling these in, you know, a considerable amount, I can greatly increase the amount of color um, that's in my image. And if I pull the top over more, um, I get more magenta, and so it'll warm up my image. And if I pull the bottom over, I'll get more green. Um, so if I do the same thing to the B channel, you can see that the colors in the toque um, are really popping out, and it's giving her face kind of a, you know, a golden color instead of this, you know, kind of bland uh, original color that, uh, was there initially? Um, I'm overshooting it a little. Ah, I'm overshooting it a little for uh, YouTube, uh, so that it's obvious on the small window. Um, okay, when you're done uh, color adjusting, uh, you can go back to RGB color mode, and then step two is usually to sharpen the image. Uh, you should probably be looking at your image um, at 100%. Um, Control Alt Zero is the shortcut for um, viewing your image at 100%. So then go into Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharpen Mask. Um, okay, the amount that you see here is how intense the sharpening effect is. So zero being no sharpening at all, and uh, and 500% being, you know, a ridiculous uh, over sharpening. Um, I find the the best the best value is usually about 120. Um, this seems to be um, almost universal, even when I'm working on you know, a, a fairly out-of-focus picture. I find that uh, by adjusting the radius and only slightly increasing the amount, I can uh, get, get the, the effect that I want. Um, the radius, uh, it, it, it uh, determines how many pixels get, um, get sharpened, like how, how wide an area. Here, the sharpening effect is like a block here and a, and a block here along the side of her face. So I find the best value is about 0 0.7. Uh, this depends entirely on the size of your image. If you're working on a really big image, like I do when I'm doing uh, stock photography, um, you need a, a, lar a slightly larger radius. I find sometimes even as high as 1. Uh, but I, th honestly, the value varies between 0 0.5 and 1, and I don't think I've ever used um, any anything outside of those, outside of that range. Uh, threshold. Uh, it, it, zero or one, I, I often find that if I'm working on a grainy image, I need a threshold of one just so that I don't sharpen all of the, the grain in the image. If you increase it above one, though, um, it looks for areas of very high contrast before it starts sharpening something, and I find that absolutely nothing gets sharpened. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to leave this one, because this is not a grainy image, um, I shot it at ISO 100 um, in, you know, fairly bright daylight, um, I'm going to no use no threshold at all and just have it sharpen everything. Uh, so, with those setting settings, I click OK, 
Um, it does its magic, and my image is sharpened. Um, from there, uh, usually the best third step, if you're going to print your image, is to set black point and white point. Now, uh, you do this in the um, in the curves menu, which I'm going to use Control M to bring up. Make sure you're in RGB color color though. Uh, if you're not, you're going <laughs> to end up with some very strange effects. Um, the step one is to double click your black point here. Um, the defaults are zero zero zero, which means when you select a point to be the dark, um, the darkest area on your image, it'll make that you know absolute you know pitch black which you do not want when you're printing a picture. Uh, for stock photography, I find that 10-10-10 works well. Some people say that removes too much contrast, and they like 8-8-8 or 12-12-12 if, um, you know, depending on the printer you're using or who you're sending it to or whether you're printing it on your home picture, um, on your home, you know, Canon or whatever. So, set my black point. I'm, I'm just eyeing it right now. Uh, I think somewhere along this collar is probably the darkest point on the image. So that point now, where I clicked, has gone to zero uh, to ten, ten, ten. Um, so it's removed any color casts in the black, assuming I click on you know an area that's actually black and not blue or red here. Um, and then if I do the same to the white, double clicking, I use two, four, five, and selecting the lightest point in the image, which I can't see right now. So I'm going to click OK, scroll over here, open up curves set that white point to be this chair here, which is a very bright specular highlight, and I can use any point there. So with those done, um, this image is finished, and, well, except for you know, touch-ups, which I might do with my clone stamp tool, but that's not you know, the point of this, uh, this tutorial. Um, and we'll just do a quick before and after. You have this. Y you can see a, a big difference in the sharpness here and here. Um, and the colors have really popped out. Uh, and it's the kind of thing you could use for a billboard now, uh, whereas before it was just, you know, standard standard photo. Um, I find that a lot of people ask, you know, wow, you must have a great camera. You know, how do you get such, you know, amazing color when really it's just you know, a few minutes in Photoshop? Uh, so if this is helpful to you, leave me a comment, and I will make more. If you don't, I'm just going to leave it at this. Uh, yeah, that's it.